Good morning, Gareth. Uh, yeah, I think, unfortunately, I think we're very close to that. Uh, I think as we disclose in our sense announcement and other communication, the sort of external and structural impediments here are just too difficult uh, to resolve. And uh, I think we, we do not see short-term relief in that. You know, stemming from the start is economic growth and steel demand. And then the fact is you just mentioned a uh, high cost of uh, electricity and rail in addition to the disruptive environment. Let's talk about uh, what's led to this as well. I, I imagine a massive organization like yours uh, relies solely on, on ESCOM to keep your business going as well. Also, the, the Transnet issues. We'll talk about them in a moment, Quirbus. I'm just curious, those interventions you put in place, what were you, what were you doing? What were you trying to get right? I mean, we've over the last, I mean, most probably four years, uh, started these processes. Obviously, cost-cutting, uh, we've... Uh, downsize the footprint of the assets so we've reduced on close some of the the rolling facilities with the attempt to increase the capacity utilization uh, of the main assets but you know a place like Newcastle has got a capacity of uh, 1.8 million tons that's equivalent to the country's consumption where the total capacity is four and a half million tons so uh, running a, a, a substantial integrated facility at 60% or less of capacity makes it very expensive. Uh, let's talk about the, uh, the demand as well for, for what it is that you manufacture as well. It's been, it's been a rough time the last couple of years, seeing numbers uh, about 20% down uh, for your primary mineral as well, which probably also isn't helping uh, the bank balance. No, I think that's 100%. Uh, you have a 20% reduction in steel consumption in South Africa over the past many years. I think we're back at consumption levels of, of 2000. 